This is the Anarchist War Journal entry number seven, and I'm going to continue with the last interview I had at the International Students for Liberty Conference in Washington, D.C. with Julie Borowski. She is known for having a fun show in which she dresses up in a costume bit of different types of uh, viewpoints people have towards government or towards the Republican Party or Democratic Party or Libertarianism. And so she has developed a following or a multi personality disorder <laughs> and uh, having fun with that and trying to also educate people about some good foundational economic principles that government schools will never teach you, of course. So let's go right into that and uh, see how that took place. A few simple questions I wanted to ask. First one would be, um, could you define what is a free market? So the free market is the government getting out of the way and allowing people to buy and sell goods without them getting in the way. All right. <laughs> and do we have a free market today? No, we don't. There's a lot of government intervention with businesses, also the Federal Reserve. If we look at that, they're actually having control of the money supply in this country. So no, nowhere close. Nowhere close, right? Nope. <laughs> and uh, would you consider yourself a libertarian? Yes, I would. And how do you define uh, libertarianism? I also define it as getting the government out of people's personal life as well as their economic life. So no government then altogether? You know, one step at a time. One step at a time? <laughs> all right, so, so, but you, all right, so oh, that's, that's great, right? One step at a time. But seeing that government is, uh, in, terms of like, um, in terms of the free market we were talking about earlier, um, they necessarily initiate force, right? Yes. They don't respect private property. Yes. Uh, we can therefore see them no different than any other criminal organization that does mm -hmm. that, right? Um, all right, so Joe, you would advocate for abolition of this organization that violates private property and self ownership. Then, I would say, as I said, one step at a time. I don't think it's practical in the near future. I would love to see it tried out of true volunteer society and see how it works out. Translation: When someone says one step at a time, what they really mean is, I know that slavery is wrong and immoral because that is what taxation is. That is when you have to work over a hundred days out of your life for your happiness to be robbed, for your productivity to be robbed, to be handed over to your political rulers, to the government, right? That does nothing but violate property rights. So when someone says one step at a time, that means I know you're enduring suffering. I know that this is a very painful experience. It's a horrible thing to enslave others, but one step at a time. I know I should not advocate immediately for unshackling your bonds, for breaking these chains that have enslaved you since birth, but one step at a time. We'll get there. I know it, uh, the advocation versus abolition of slavery should be something that should be immediately considered, immediately demanded, but I don't know how slaves are gonna uh, run their lives without these chains. I don't know how people are gonna figure things out without their slave masters. You know, there's, that was the same kind of talk in the 1800s and people are talking about, well, where are they going to go <laughs> if you abolish slavery? This is their way of life. This is, this is all they know. So one step at a time, instead of demanding the immediate release, the immediate abolition of slavery. All right, so are you part of anarchy then? Yes, I heard yeah. anarchy. <laughs> I would say let's try it out and see how it works. Right. But I don't think it's practical in the near future in this country. Well, I guess in, in terms of like anarchy, right? Uh, the essence of like the free market mm -hmm. and volunteerism is consent, right? Yes. I and mean, wherever there's government, it's coercion, right? Yeah. Uh, so, and you can't show me government without showing me individual people. You can't show me anarchy without showing me individuals. So mm -hmm. here in this uh, interaction we have, we yeah. have consent. So here we have anarchy. It exists here yes. right now, anarchy's right? Anarchy is all over the place. Yeah. Anarchy is all over the place. We just said it. Great. So you don't need steps, right? To get there, wherever there is consent and the individual relationships of people, you find anarchy, right? It's not a place or a destination. It's a way of life. It's a way of valuing and respecting property rights. It's a way of advocating for consent against coercion. And wherever there is no coercion, you have anarchy. And in that room, in which we're talking, that is anarchy, right? So if you can at least understand that and get that concept, then it should be very easy for you to then also advocate consent in all relationships and condemn the coercive ones that violate consent, like theft, murder, assault, and rape, immediately. Not sometimes in the few future, not sometimes let's take steps towards uh, saying that's a bad thing and let's, let's try to get rid of all of that. Right? If you ever see those kinds of actions, you advocate for its abolition. You advocate for its end. 
<laughs> so no, yes. I agree with you. I'm just like, is that practical right now? It's uh, more of a question of is it, is it practical than rather is it right? Oh, it's like trying to, to achieve it through politics? I think there's multiple ways you can achieve it through education or through politics. We'll see. Right. Do well, your own thing. See if it works. If, you, if it works, uh, I guess yeah. what do you think? Yeah, the education stuff like you're doing YouTube, that is, I think, a great way to kind of go about it. I yeah. think that is a, a great print from way, more in line with your principles. I think that politics there it kind of compromises your principles uh, and that aim. Um, there's no factual evidence to show like voting or politics or government has ever set anyone free. Yeah. Um, and so like, no, let's abandon this stuff. You know, it's uh, the fact that we were born as tax slaves implies that uh, all the political attempts to achieve freedom in the past have failed. Um, Libertarian Party uh, especially, right? The size of government continues to grow mm -hmm. since decades since it was founded. Um, would that be something you would consider perhaps examining that maybe politics just doesn't work? No, I know what you mean. Yeah. I think politics probably isn't the best way to bring about anarchy as you seem to want. But I think if we could repeal some bad laws, I think that's a good step in the right direction. It's not ideal though. Like Ron Paul. Yeah, Ron Paul. How many laws did he repeal? Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> he didn't pass a bill. I know, I know. But well, he's still a good guy, I think. Even he did education through Congress. He got a lot of media running for president. I think he introduced people to the ideas of liberty. He helped me a lot. So. Uh, how did you find Ron Paul? How did I define yeah, him? How did you find Ron oh, Paul? Oh, Ron Paul. Yeah. Um, through the internet. Um, people on Facebook were talking about him. And then I watched the GOP debates. Later on, I was like, this is my guy. Right. Oh, well, some, so a lot of people come across it by accident uh, in terms of that. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you feel, I guess, uh, I mean, Ron Paul, with the whole trying to take someone's website because it has the same oh, pattern yeah. of letters of his name. Remember that? Oh, yeah, I, I do remember. Which web website was it? Ronpaul.com. Ronpaul.com. <laughs> Oh, yeah, there was like a forum, and he was trying to. He was trying I, to just, like remember. get handed over and trying to use uh, the force, uh, threatening them to steal their website. Yeah, I, I do. I kind of remember what was going on. Yeah, I, I don't remember the exact details, but that was kind of surprising. Maybe, I think first probably more his team than Ron Paul. All right, I was say, we'll give you ronpaw.org for free. Dude, we love you. Uh, ronpaw.com, yeah. we'll give you the forum, we'll give you the email listing, because it's worth like hundreds yeah. of thousands uh, at a really decent price. And he's like, no, I want it all. Uh, I was like, dude, what are you doing? You're advocating advocate against theft. What are yeah. you doing here in this issue? I remember part of that, yeah. but yeah, that's kind of long over right, right, at this right. point. Right, so some time ago, Ron Paul was the guy who advocates against theft, right? Don't steal because government doesn't like competition. Went out of his way to also try to steal another person's website <laughs> trying to go out of his way to steal both his website I believe dot com and dot org and this is a person who has been championing his cause for many years all good wonderful praises of the slave master that is Ron Paul and what happened near the end after Ron Paul uh, abdicated his throne well he, he demanded that they hand it over and he said well you know we'll give you the dot org for free and we'll give you the dot com for like over a hundred thousand or something. And he said no. <laughs> he felt he did not have to pay for that because the letters that make up the address for that website, the patterns he felt of those letters of the R right next to the O and N belong solely to him. Because he believes that he is the only Ron Paul in the world and therefore only he can have the arrangement of patterns of that information. And of course the guy was uh, upset by that, and Ron Paul tried to go through, uh, you know, status means to take it back, to steal it from him. So for a guy who advocates against that, it's uh, very inconsistent, you could say, hypocritical uh, at most uh, to do, right? Especially when they're advocating, when they're saying, hey, <laughs> we'll give you this one for free. But no, no, not for Mr. Ron Paul, the slave master. And so yeah, that's that's the story. Check it out. And of course, uh, if it was his team that was trying to do that, then all Ron Paul himself would have had to do is just put out a letter and say, "Hey, uh, these guys uh, were acting on my behalf. I reprimanded them. That's not uh, the direction that I go principally. And so, hey, it was a mistake. It was an error. My bad. That's all you would have to do, right? That's what anyone would have to do. Just publish a letter <laughs> and clear up uh, the mess or the issue, right? But no." Of course, nothing like that was ever aired or published. So it would have to therefore be something that he would, was advocating and signed his name off to pursue and press forward and stealing. Well, uh, what do you see yourself, uh, I guess, in a couple of years from now in your, I guess, advancement? Where do you see yourself going uh, after that? 
I just kind of want to continue making YouTube videos and see where it takes me. Mm -hmm. Like, I never expected to be here, so I don't know what the next step is. I think kind of there's not really an example for me to use. Right, right, right. So we'll see. Yeah, thank you so much for yeah, uh, the opportunity. <laughs> and uh, best of luck out there with thank your endeavors. You. Thank you. So there you go. There you have it. That's Julie Borowski. Uh, status with a, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, lowercase s, right? And in our advocation for our political rulers, in our advocation for our politics, in our advocation for government. And uh, perhaps I would have given this a nicer, kinder critique had I not come across a fundraiser that she's helping out for one would-be slave master that's vying for the throne of tyranny, Austin Peterson himself. So, <laughs> I don't really particularly keep up with Julie Borowski's videos or her shenanigans or what she does or for most of the people that you saw in throughout the interviews. And so, that's something that uh, was not so much uh, upsetting but disappointing, right? So, after the whole interview, I was like, well, great, you know, she has a good understanding of anarchy. That was kind of fun. That was great. And, of course, right before, like a day or two ago, uh, before I'm doing this video, I come across... An event for an Ebright event for her saying well I'm gonna go show up and I'm gonna to try to fundraise money for Austin Peterson the douchebag to run for the throne of tyranny so right off the bat that just for me I just that just throws all kind of credibility out the window that she may have and perhaps uh, I find that very disgusting especially for Austin Peterson come on <laughs> the guy thinks that uh, the Constitution is something you should bind your children to for all eternity. The guy thinks that uh, you have real security in this world. The guy put out a video or an, an essay about a year ago, and I put out a rebuttal towards it some time ago, back in May, and I called him out for what, why is it that he's going against anarchists now? Well, if you kind of put it all up together, it's because he wants to disassociate and set himself apart. Uh, for his eventual run for political rulership. And what happened many months later after May? That's exactly what he did. So I would have given this a much kinder narrative critique, but that's just uh, <laughs> very off-putting. <laughs> Man, shaking my head the entire way through just, just looking at that, reading that. What are you thinking? Come on now, right? Do not compromise principles for politics. Good for evil. I mean, you already see wherever there is consent, that is anarchy. You no need to look further into the future. Look into now and help people uh, realize that and to uh, move forward in their path and wherever that may be in alignment with their principles. Do not compromise your values, right? But when you do that, and especially when you align yourself with Peterson, I, I, that's, I don't know where we're to go with that. Um, go look at your videos. But it's just, uh, I don't know, there's another person out there for me to just eh, shrug my shoulders and just kind of keep working, keep doing what I'm doing and ignoring the uh, political advocates, uh, those who advocate for would-be slave masters, right? So again, there's no factual evidence to show that politics has set anyone free. Uh, the issue of Ron Paul bringing that up, most people, a majority that I've come to find, uh, the other anarchists, on Facebook, uh, came across him by accident. So, not something like done on purpose, right? His spread of uh, campaigning that politics was set to free, perpetuating the fraud, that, that uh, at the end that you'll achieve some sense of freedom. Uh, yeah, he may have voted no for, some, for, for many laws, but how many of those did he manage to repeal, to, to stop? None. None. For decades. Zero. So, let go of this fantasy. Let go of the insanity of thinking over and over again. Maybe this time, this, this is it. Everyone's been saying that every four years. Everyone says that this is it. This is our opportunity. This is when we actually achieve something real. It hasn't happened. It will never happen. Uh, let's move forward rationally, right? Uh, with a good sense of uh, reality on our shoulders and let go of this utopian fantasy that somehow government, through government and politics, we'll, we'll, we'll get it right this time, right? So with that, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that last segment. 
and I will continue with the Anarchist War Journal entries with uh, throughout the year of uh, other interesting events that I come across as well. So thank you much. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Um, and if you enjoyed this content, please uh, patronize my work through the Patron account I have down in the description area. So with that, see you guys at the Victory Party and take good care.